In this video lesson, we will combine concepts about linear functions to answer a commonly asked test question. The problem is to match four given linear functions to their graphs on the coordinate plane. Above we have numbered one through four, our formulas, and below, lettered A through D, are the lines. Now first, let's take a look at the slopes in the formulas. We have two negative slopes and two positive slopes. So we know that the function 2 has a negative slope, which is negative 5, and function 3 also has a negative slope, which is negative 2. Now let's take a look at which lines drawn on the coordinate plane also have negative slope. These are the lines A and B because A and B are both decreasing when X increases. They slope downwards. But which one of A and B is 2 or 3? Well notice that B is much steeper than A and the slope negative 5 gives a line that is much steeper than the slope negative 2. So we know that B should correspond to the formula number 2. This leaves us with only A as a possibility for 3. So we've already answered two of them. Now to the positive sloping functions. Well, both these slopes are equal, so we can't use the slope to help us, but there's still the y-intercept. Function 1 has a y-intercept of negative 2, and function 4 has a y-intercept of positive 1. Now remember that the y-intercept means that the point with x coordinate 0 and y coordinate equal to the y intercept lies on the line. So that means that the point 0, negative 2 should lie on the line of formula number 1, and the point 0, 1 should lie on the line of formula number 4. Let's graph these two points. Here is 0, negative 2, 2 below the origin, and here is 0, 1, 1 above the origin. 0, 1 lies on line C, and it also should lie on the line with formula number 4. So the answer to 4 is C. This leaves us with only one option for number 1, that it must be D. And indeed, the point 0, negative 2 lies on D, and it should lie on formula 1's line. Now I'll show another way of doing the same problem that is also a good way of thinking about lines. Instead of comparing slopes and y-intercepts, we'll just take points off of the graph and we'll plug in their coordinates into the corresponding equations. So for example, this point, which lies on line C, has the coordinate 2, 7. x equals 2, y equals 7. We will try plugging in x equals 2 and y equals 7 into all of these formulas. The formula where we end up with a truthful equality should be the, the formula of line C. So here in formula number 1, Plugging in x equals 2 and y equals 7 gives us 7 equals 4, which is obviously false. So we move on to formula number 2. We plug in y equals 7 and x equals 2. We get negative 5 times 2 plus 6, which is equal to negative 10 plus 6, which is equal to negative 4 still not equal to 7. So we keep looking. Here's formula 3. 
y equals 7, negative 2 times x, which is 2, so negative 2 times 2, and then minus 3, this equals to negative 4 minus 3, which is negative 7. But negative 7 does not equal to 7, so obviously this formula is wrong. We are left with only one choice for c, and that is formula number 4. So we already know that 4 and c correspond to each other. But we can just make sure that, that everything works out in the formula. If we plug in y equals 7 and x equals 2, we get 7 equals 3 times 2 plus 1, which is 6 plus 1, which is 7. This is true. So we know for sure now that c is the graph of the formula number 4. So now that we don't have to worry about line c, we will take a point that is on a different line. For example, line a. Let's just take the point negative 2, comma 1. It has x equals negative 2 and y equals 1. So we will plug in x equals negative 2 and y equals 1 into all the formulas except for number 4 until we find the right one. So starting with formula 1, plug in y equals 1 equals 3 times x equals negative 2 minus 2 which results in 1 equals negative 8. This is obviously false. So we check formula 2. y equals 1, negative 5 times x is negative 2, and then plus 6. We get positive 10, because two negatives cancel out and make a positive, and plus 6. This equals to 16. 1 does not equal to 16, so it can't be formula 2. So line A must be the graph of formula 3. And we are about to check just to make sure that this point does lie on formula 3's line. So we plug in, we get negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And then minus 3 equals 1. 1 equals 1, it's true. So, A corresponds to 3. Now we just have two lines to go. Now that we've checked A and C, we can remove them from our list of possibilities and check out a point on, say, line B. Well, here's a good point. x equals 0, y equals 6. Now we will plug this into our formulas and see which one fits. So for formula 1, we would get 6 equals 3 times 0 minus 2, which means 6 equals negative 2. That's wrong. So we know that line B has to be the graph of formula 2. And just to be sure, We'll plug it in, and we'll get 6 equals negative 5 times 0, plus 6, and that equals to 6. 6 equals 6 is true, so we have B corresponding to formula 2. And we only have one line left, and one formula left. So obviously, D corresponds to 1. I hope this helped, and thanks for watching.